48 hour ultimatum to Ministry of Finance to honor its word to pay all matured principal and outstanding coupons due on existing bonds issued by government. This evening, we engage them on this very latest ultimatum. Also, majority in parliament want road toll pegged at five cities and above as they vow to reject anything less than that amount. We'll hear from them, including the minority on the opposition on the reintroduction of road tolls as announced by the finance minister Ken Uforiata during the reading of the 2023 budget statement. And later on, pre tertiary teacher unions take on education minister Dr. Yawase Duchum on his threat to shut down non performing second cycle institutions. In business, we'll be joined in 40 minutes with the very latest from that sector as well as sports and entertainment all these and more here on hot edition here on 3fm 92.7 A pleasure that you could be a part of uh, this evening's bulletin. It's streaming live on Facebook. The handle is 3FM927 as well as on Twitter. The handle is 3FM927 on Facebook as well. Find us with these same handles. I am Eric Mawina Egbeta. Alternatively, tweet at us with the hashtag Hot Edition on Twitter and on Facebook as well. You can use the same hashtag as we read our comments uh, on the various stories we'll be bringing to you uh, this evening. I am Eric Mawina Egbeta. A pleasure that you could be a part of the bulletin. Let's settle for the details and we're starting from the quarters of the coalition of individual bondholders because they've given government and the finance ministry really a 48 hour ultimatum to honor its pledge to pay all matured principal and outstanding coupons due on existing bonds issued by government the group has also called on the securities and exchange commission as well as the ghana stock exchange to enforce the rules of all of full disclosure required by all issuers including the government of Ghana. It follows the failure of the finance ministry to honor the coupons and principal payments due individual bondholders who opted out of the voluntary domestic debt exchange program. The ministry had given an assurance to resume payment on the 13th of March, but in a statement signed jointly by Dr. Joel Jangma Akwete, convener of the Individual Bondholders Association of Ghana, and Senyo Hosi, convener the Ghana Individual Bondholders Forum and the coalition, they registered their disappointment about the development, particularly the loud silence and inability of the regulatory bodies such as the SEC, that's the Securities and Exchanges Commission, and the Ghana Stock Exchange to enforce the bond market rules. And the individual pensioner bondholders have also issued a statement to a similar effect. Dr. Edwana Nienchi is the convener of the Individual Pensioner Bondholders Forum. Uh, he is joining us on phone and will pick the thoughts as well of uh, Senor Hussi of the Individual Bondholders Forum uh, for some thoughts on this. But as you well know it, the Finance Minister after the conclusion of the domestic debt exchange program uh, announced a series of measures and the final of the releases was in line after a meeting with these bondholders both the pensioner bondholders the individual bondholders and then the bondholders association of ghana outlined the details to carry out payment uh, as to these persons who did not participate in government domestic debt exchange program. That timeline to resume payment was the 13th of March. That was yesterday. And according to sources and other media reports, processes had been started by the finance ministry to begin payment. And as such, by close of day yesterday, 
monies were supposed to hit the account of these bondholders who did not partake in the uh, debt restructuring program of the government of Ghana. But unfortunately, that payment has not been done. And as at 5 p.m. today, which is the close of business as well, payment is yet to hit the account of these bondholders. And just to refresh the minds of listeners, the domestic debt exchange program has been a necessary evil as uh, ascribed or as described by government to helping the country secure some 3 billion cities uh, financial bailout from the International Monetary Fund. And even that, analysts have said that the March deadline stands at some risk as government continues to finalize uh, final details with external creditors. Dr. Edwana Nienchi, thankfully, has joined us on the telephone line with some more on this. Uh, Doc, many thanks for speaking to us. Now, are you able to tell how much in terms of coupon payments are in arrears? Just to start off with. Um, thank you. But uh, one cannot uh, say how much is in arrears. In fact, after the the DB, DBP, governor hasn't uh, come out to say these are the number of uh, bonds that were not uh, tended in and their maturity days. So nobody knows the amount involved in the depository now. It's only government who can who can determine that. Mm. And as of the last time we heard from the finance ministry on this issue, which was on the 27th of February, that statement which gave the assurance to begin payment on the 13th of March, has there been any communication again to that effect? No, after our meeting with the minister on 27th, where the minister uh, promised that... Uh, government was starting from by, not even from by 13 March, uh, by which time they would have uh, resolved all issues. And uh, we just had to wait. We didn't think that we should even uh, find out before the 13th. The 13th was yesterday, and at the end of yesterday, we haven't uh, received any payment and government hasn't also issued any statement uh, to that effect. And so this morning we have to work on the, the press statement to inform the whole public that this is what is happening and impress upon the government to do the needful. Impressed upon the government to do the needful, but between what time now and... What threshold, or is it the 48-hour ultimatum that you're staking to, to have government pay you all of uh, the monies owed you? We, we have said government should take steps to pay these areas immediately. However, if by the end, the close of day on Thursday, that is giving three more days today, tomorrow, and Thursday, if by Thursday, uh, 5 p.m., close of business, uh, payment has not been made, then we will advise ourselves as to the, the net cost of action we have to take. Mm. I'll come back to you as to what the next cause of action would be, but uh, Martin Pebu is a private legal practitioner as well. He speaks for the Indi Individual Bondholders Association of Ghana. He's also joined us on phone as we try and gather thoughts really as to bondholders and the current situation you find yourselves in. Many thanks, Council, for speaking to us this evening as well here on Hot Edition. And so the government pair that statement on the 27th was to begin paying monies that you had invested in bonds, that has not happened. Your reactions to this and more. Hello, Mr. Martin. Hello. Can you hear me, please? Yes, yes. Uh, so I didn't hear the last part. Is uh, that yes? Yeah. I, I was asking really what your next line of action is after what appears to be a failure on the part of government to honor its own promises? 
Yeah, so we gave, uh, in our French release, we gave a 48-hour ultimatum. All right? Uh-huh. So now we have to wait for it to expire, that it expires on Thursday, and then we'll take the next, we we'll need to review the situation, and then if we have to escalate, we'll escalate to demonstrations, picketing, etc. Don't forget, about 1.3 million Ghanaians have been affected, and these people also have families. So it means that it's running to do multipliers. You are looking at easily about 6 million citizens affected. So this is no small matter. We will fight it to the end with our blood, if need be, because we cannot continue to allow President Kufuado and Oforiata to make money off us. And then we die while they live. No, 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 no. We'll fight it back with all our blood. But yeah. but does it surprise you that after all of the difficulties seeking exemptions and the likes, the DD program was concluded, there was assurances from government. Does it surprise you that these assurances appear to be breached again by the government you entrusted with your investment? No, I'm not surprised. This current breach that has happened, I saw it coming. So actually, when I was asked about it, I said I didn't believe government would pay us on the 13th because of the way Mr. Kenefurata has behaved and ably supported, unfortunately, by President Kufuado. So I knew it, that it was just going to be another... It was just going to be another default upon default. It's, it's unfortunate. That's a sad comment to it of the uh, stewardship of President Kufuado. It's such a shame. It's very, very disrespectful to citizens. That's what well predators. People have lent you money. It's time to pay them. You don't want to pay them, but you insist on doing other things. When President Kufuado was bathing in the sky, he was warned that, hey, it has consequences. He wouldn't listen. Recently, you had a German ambassador when President Kufuado asked him to intervene, then he said, no, they can't intervene if they don't take steps to reduce the size of that one. Have you seen him do anything like that? Mm. It's all about intransigence. Everything is about him. It's not about governance. Everything is just about his personal aggrandizement. It's such a shame. Mr. Bobo, I'll just ask you to hold the line because... Both your group and the pensioner bondholders appear to have issues with the Securities and Exchanges Commission and the Ghana Stock Exchange because per the statement, there is some onus which lie with these two institutions to ensure that government pays your money. And I'll, I'll just go to Dr. Edwan on the entry because you have a lot more understanding as to the workings of the SEC and all of that. What is the expectation on the Securities and Exchanges Commission at a time like this? Well, uh I, I, for me, this is not a time to be talking about the responsibility or otherwise of SEC. SEC will not get any money. We need our money from government. SEC is not the one to go and take the money to us. So, mm. as, at, as far as I'm concerned now, it's not an issue about SEC. Another matter, another day, we can talk about SEC. SEC is rule here, but not at this moment. But for your members, pensioners, as a matter of fact, how are they reacting as well to what appears to be the delay in government honoring uh, these investments? Nobody is, is happy, uh, especially people who have some other medical issues to deal with, expecting these money to come for them to handle. So nobody is happy with what is happening. And that's why we think that uh, government should do whatever it has to do to make the payment at the close of business on Thursday. 48 hours, that's the, that's the ultimatum you've provided to government. What happened? It's more, it's more than 48 hours. It's more than 48 hours. Yes, we are supposed to pay yesterday. And if we are paying Thursday, that is three clear days. Right. I'm, I'm saying 48 because the statement came today. But what happens by Thursday from your group, the pensioner bondholders, 
if your monies are not paid because we've seen you pick it at the finance ministry which resulted in meetings upon meetings and then the declaration that you'll be paid in full whatever that is owed you well the the people's expectation is that if we say we'll advise ourselves we are going back to the picketing uh, but let me let me see that picketing was the last thing that we wanted to do uh it it, it wasn't a good thing to do the stress you don't subject the elderly to go and uh, uh, be a place to be a place at, at a place for that long some of them needed to be in their houses for their medication uh, you know what uh, goes to the old age ah. so it was not a right thing there for to, why you couldn't attend to let them go to it but we were forced to do that but i believe government has seen uh, the signs and the and and the worrying situation that that created and will not allow that to happen again. We have some other options that we can. We went to Parliament. We can go back to Parliament and let Parliament take on this battle of ensuring that government uh, is staying uh, listening to its own citizens. So there are a lot of options that mm. we can opt uh, instead of going to back to the picketing. Uh, which is very stressful and, and not something that we want to be doing now. Just finally, when the former Chief Justice joined you during uh, the picketing days at the Finance Ministry, she mentioned that going to court was one of the options on the table. That appears to have died down quite a lot. Is this something that's still pending on the table for you as a group? I personally do not think government would allow a citizen to go to court to demand what is their rightful uh, investment. And it's uh, external people, foreign people, I, I, that, that would be fine, but not your own citizens. So I don't think government would, would allow that even to happen. Uh, that, that would be a bad thing to happen in this country when uh, government is refusing to pay its own citizens the money that the citizens have uh, lent to the, the, the government for development. Mm. I don't think that will, that, that, that will come. It's an option, but I don't think government will allow that to come. Right. Doc, I'll take the, I'll ask that uh, hopefully things round up as quickly as possible for the government to pay you. But let me just end the conversation with private legal practitioner uh, Martin Kwebu. Mr. Kwebu, just one thought that has come across in the last few days, particularly during uh, your calls for an exemption, is that... It appears you're in a losing battle, really, with the government. As they stated quite clearly that because they do not have the money to pay, that's why they were renegotiating all of the debts that the government have. What is your response to this? Wow. We are not in a losing battle. Hi. Don't take the Ghanaian for granted, though. Yeah. Don't take the Ghanaian for granted. Ghanaian... You may find us to be that docile, but there comes a point when we start enough, we will spit out all the anger, all the frustrations and everything we have. So you just watch. This is a ticking time bomb. There could be an Arab Spring in this country. You just watch. Those are if quite... We don't change the things we are doing. Quite, yeah. a, quite alarming statements, you'd say. Arab Spring and the likes. Sorry? I'm saying that your suggestion there could be an Arab Spring, those are yes, quite alarming. Yes. yes, there could be an Arab Spring because the conditions today are far worse than the conditions when President Kufuado was in opposition and talking about an Arab Spring, saying that the conditions in Ghana were right for an Arab Spring. Today it's worse. Unemployment is about 17%, right? Now, you have inflation. You think it even went up to 64%. You see the CD lost over 50% of its value. You see, so we have cost of living crisis. People can't buy food. People can't buy medicine. People can't pay their rent. People can't go about their daily lives because they've lost their investment. Businesses are collapsing. Electricity and water prices went through the roof. All these things. And the guardians are shouldering them. You think it's easy? Yeah, look, people meet me all the time. They say, look, hey, Martin, 
You say you are angry. You are not angry. We are angrier than you. Just wait. The day you see our anger, then you see. Uh, you should understand what they mean. Yeah. Yeah. I meet people all the time. They say, look, we listen to you. We think you are angry. You are not angry. We are angrier than you. And in due course, we will show that anger. So, Mr. President Kupado better beware. So, right now, what he's done is that he's superintendent of a government where he's openly benefiting from data banks, you know, through Obriate's company. President Kufuado is one person who, in opposition, insulted every president that came before him. Everybody was corrupt. Every president that came before him was corrupt. He was the only thing. Today, the jury is out on his stewardship. But at least we are aware that he, I'm not aware of any previous president who benefited from a company directly like this. I'm not aware of any previous president who put his brother's uh, company in charge of our bonds. I'm not aware of that data bank. I'm not aware of any previous president whose uh, brother's company was earning fees and commissions from the bonds that we uh, issue as a, 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 a nation, as Ghana. I'm not aware of any previous president whose brother's company, like Data Bank, made over 150 million Ghana cities by some account that Okuriata himself uh, admitted in parliament. And that's why some accounts have it that it's more than three times over. That's over 500 million and counting. So these are very bad times. We thank to the, to the lowest ebb of our governance under President Kufuado. And so after the other spring, it's just a matter of time. And so you say... The next 48 hours, nothing happens, and you're picketing at the finance ministry. We will meet and decide on it. Don't, don't worry. If it doesn't happen, we live here. You will see. There are over 6 million Ghanaians involved. So that's what picketing Oh, Picketing is not the worst we can do. There is more. So just be patient. Yeah. Okay. Right, then. That's Martin Pibu. He is a private legal practitioner and also the convener of the Individual Bondholders Association of Ghana speaking to us this evening as they all continue to sound the alarm bells as to what would happen should government fail to honor the, the amateur bonds, the government as of the 27th of February of this year, had promised to begin payment by the 13th of March. That was yesterday. There's been the close of business day today. And as you heard, uh, Dr. Edwan Anienji, who's a convener of the pensioner bondholders, say that for pensioners, particularly those on medication, these are not good times for them. There was assurances from the president, there was assurances from the finance minister himself that payment will be made to them in due time. That appears not to be the case and is a cause for concern to them. And let us know what you think. Find us on Facebook. I've seen quite a number of messages already from a number of you on some of the stories I will be bringing to you uh, later on. But let us know what you make of what appears to be a failure of government to pay pensioners individual bondholders and the likes their mature bonds we're switching attentions now to education because pre-tertiary teacher union say the education minister dr yawasei duchum has no mandate to close down schools for non-performance the ghana national association of teachers nat and the coalition of concerned teachers have rather asked the education minister to provide resources to the non-performing schools the education minister has had admonished heads of second cycle institutions to improve their performance or risk having their schools shut down. But the teacher unions disagree. Thomas Musatanko is general secretary of NAT. Through the, the management line out to the director general, then the director general will then take it to the GES council and the issue will be discussed. And the law provides for the Ghana Education Service Council. It, and listen to all they say is that a 11a says that advise the minister on policy formulation and coordination of approved national policies and programs b says that ensure the effective and efficient management of basic education and senior high schools so the management of efficient and effective uh, uh, and effective administration of the basic schools including the the 
the, uh, how do you call it, the JHS up to the SHS, has been given not only to the regional directors, but if they have, if there are issues, they communicate to the director general. If the director general will then bring it to the attention of the GES council, and the GES council will then advise the minister on what is to be done. Hmm. The question to be asked: What is the basis of the minister's assertion? So that's Thomas Musatanko. He is General Secretary of NAT. Ayikwe Awule Adukwe is the Communications Director of the Coalition of Concerned Teachers Ghana, one of the many groups who are raising concerns to the suggestions of the Education Minister. We've been picking thoughts as well from educationists on the commentary of the Minister as well. But many thanks, Mr. Adukwe, for speaking to us uh, this evening here on Hot Edition. And so, really, What's the argument? The Ghana Education Service and its council reports to the education minister. They are the institutions that work directly under the ministry. And so what if these are suggestions that is coming from the Ghana Education Service? Thank you very much and good evening to all your listeners. I think the, it is the issue about the minister making a pronouncement that the uh, Senior high schools and TV schools that underperform will be closed down. Is that not it? Rightly so. Okay. Now, from the point of view of the Honorable Minister, uh, the pronouncement that he made, first of all, I have a, an issue with it. To say that um, schools will be closed down if they don't perform, and I say, if the management of the schools don't don't have some sort of intervention for the low-performing students and the underperforming to be closed down, suggest that they are not performing because the human resource or the teachers and the management of the school are not doing their best. That is the main issue. Why do you but say this? But in this era, yeah, from, from what he said, that is what he's trying to preempt, because the performance of a school does not hinge on only the human resource. You can even look at the environment. You can look at the teaching and learning resources. You have to even look at the child, the parents, and everything. They all come together to ensure that the child performs very well, or the child is brought up the way he or she is supposed to be brought up. So you cannot conclude in this era that a school that doesn't perform, which criteria is he using? The school that doesn't perform will be closed down. Well, you see, school, school, you cannot compare, yeah. see, that is what I say, you cannot compare Eshi Prefect to Legon Prefect. You cannot put them on the same pedestal. They, they are all Prefect schools. But I think if I should ask you where you think your ward should attend senior high school, you would choose Legon Prefect. Why is it so? So I think the minister should come again. I don't know why he's making such pronouncement. And the minister has no power to close down any school mm. in Ghana here. The minister has no power. He has no such powers. But the, the minister makes the argument largely on the success rates of, or the pass rates of these senior high schools during the West African senior secondary certificate exams. Some of these schools have zero pass marks. And he says that he makes the argument quite strongly based on, on the reportage from that closed door meeting that the government commits resources to these institutions and so if consistently as a school you're getting zero pass mark during the wasi you're as good as being shut down first of all i say he has no power to shut down in the school now secondly what is government doing about schools under trees what is government doing about schools such as la Prefect, where their staff common room is a tree the single tree in the school has become the staff common room. 
where students are studying in uncompleted bills. Have they ever commended the teachers in those schools that in spite of the scarce resources, in spite of the condition in which you find yourself, you are still performing? Have they ever commended them on that score? Now, again, in this era, are we measuring the performance of a school based on an examination in this era? That, that appears because to be a child the standard to which to well test in an these schools. The school is not doing well. Unless you can point to another means of testing how well these schools are doing, it appears the minister is using WASI exams and pass rates of schools and the fact that they continue to get 0%. That's his argument. Then it is sad and very regrettable that in this era of standard-based education and then the Common Core program that is being implemented at the junior high school and we are going to do the same as the senior high school. This same minister who is trying to project that we are now in a standard-based period, there is no place in Africa here where children at the age of 14 or 15 write basic school BEC examination, and if they don't pass, they don't have they don't have that, that 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 opportunity to go to senior high school. And so if the same minister is now basing the performance of schools per the WASI results, then it is very sad. And he's rather not thinking about providing the appropriate resources to schools, even in Accra here, to ensure that teachers who are really giving up their best at the end of the day will be supported by the resources being made available so that they can really do what they are supposed to do. You cannot give me a bicycle and give another person a motorbike and expect all of us to travel from Accra to Kumasi that we should get there at the same time and on that same day. So, with me using a bicycle and another another person using a motorbike. So what are you suggesting? The minister should come again. It is absolutely wrong. Mm. He doesn't have any power to close down any schools. They should go around Accra here and go and look at some of the secondary schools. Even the business schools, it is worse off. And make sure that they provide the necessary teaching and learning materials. Teachers are really doing their best. Teachers are doing their best. Some of these schools that he is talking about, you go there and you will find only two trained teachers. And they are doing everything. And now you are telling them that if they don't perform well, you close down the school, which you don't even have the power to do. Go to those schools, go and look at the problems that they are facing, and then try as much as possible to ensure that the problems are minimized. And I can tell you, teachers in Ghana are hardworking, very much dedicated, and they will do what they are supposed to do. Mr. Aikwea Willa I appreciate that you could speak to us this evening. Thank you very much. He is the Director of Communications for the Coalition of Consent Teachers Ghana speaking to us this evening. You're listening to Hot Edition here on 3FM 92.7. Must mention that we're streaming live on Facebook. The handle's 3FM 927. Find us there. Leave a message in our streams. We'll do the reading for you on our top stories. Government delaying in our Honoring the matured bonds of persons who did not subscribe to the domestic debt exchange program. Let us know what you think as well. But I've seen quite a number of messages also in relation to one of the stories we'll be bringing to you and the National Honors Awards today. I'll do that reading when we take that story. But we take you to Parliament and the conversation about root tolls as we ready ourselves for business because the majority says anything less than five cities as root toll will be fiercely rejected, even though government, uh, despite government suspending the toll and having to reintroduce it. Chair of the Road and Transport Committee says nowhere in this world are road tolls less than a dollar, but the minority is pushing for broader consultation that will have a price value generally accepted. Parliamentary Affairs Correspondent Komla Kluchi has a rest of the story. Well, as road users, you may not have paid road tolls for about a year, but wait a minute. You soon may be paying 
road tolls again, even after government for about a year suspended the payment of road tolls. Well, the Minister of Finance, with its revenue generating strategies, is reintroducing road tolls. As a chair of a committee for roads and transport, I have not had any discussion. There hasn't been any discussion or, uh, I mean, we haven't been uh, informed about the proposed rate for the reintroduction of the toll. I have always made a stance that if government want to do reintroduction of the toll, we have to just bite the bullet and fix a rate that will be commensurable or will be able to raise enough revenue to solve our road problems because I don't see the reason why if a uh, rate was one CD and now you, after uh, some years, you want to put it one CD 50. But to me, I think it is inadequate. Per alert cited by TV3, caption re reintroduction of road tolls, the amendment of fees and charges, miscellaneous provisions, Act 2022, Act 1080. The finance ministry is proposing an 88% increment in road tolls. Well, this ranges from 50 per west to almost about four cities that they are reintroducing. Well, this is a revenue measure that they are bringing, but the Ministry of Roads and Highways is yet to actually deliberate on this and also give approval to it. But for it to become enforced, well, Parliament will have to give that explicit instruction or approval to it. Already, the chairman of the Roads and Transport Committee of Parliament, Kennedy Oseinyako, is indicating that he will not approve of anything less than five cities as a road toll. So after several, after suspending the road toll for more more than a year, and you are adding just 50 pesos to it, then why do we could have as well go ahead to maintain the one city and add, uh, 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 whilst we are collecting the one city, we could have made a proposal and add 50 pesos to it. But if you come and uh, you said you have uh, suspended it and you want to add, for me, as a road chair, I will not support anything less than five cities. And I'm saying it based on the fact that the average road toll in the sub-region, even globally, is $1. What is $1? How much is $1 today? Okay? So if you're able to raise five, if it is five CD, we are short of raising not less than a billion Ghana CD. Do you know what a billion Ghana city can do? It can do so many things on our road. On the side of the minority, anything less than a broader consultation on the matter will not be entertained or countenance. I think this is a, a, a sad situation. Uh, he claimed 78 million cities a, a year is not enough. Uh, I can tell you that people who have weeded road sites uh, are, are, are with feeder roads and other things whose bills are uh, road fund currently, some old as little as 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 20,000 cities who are not being paid. And there are thousands. A 78 million Ghana city would have cleared a chunk of those people's bills. We will support this if the discussion is broad-based, includes all stakeholders, but we are not going to support this just to create an, another revenue stream into the general pool of government for them to use to pay for very unnecessary things like cathedral and others. We will not support it. I, I know there has been some general understanding that based on the inflation and other things, I've heard people in the public say that, look, if you drive V8 and they charge you five cities to cross the motorway, they don't care. That's Gavin Kwame Agbuja. He is the ranking on the transfer committee, but also the minority whip uh, speaking uh, or ending that report by my colleague Komla Kruchi. Dela Michelle is here with the very latest from the world of business, and there's a lot more on the on the tolls as well because. It Indeed, the conversation has been brought with regard to the revised charges, if that's what government is supposed to take or not. And mm. we've also been engaging a tax expert on this particular matter, who is actually arguing that the revised toll charges will not be enough to boost the country's road infrastructure. The government reintroduced the road tolls and increased the rates by an average of 88% across board. But Francis Timor Boy argues that the rate is still inadequate to generate enough to finance meaningful 
road police we're speaking to three business if you look at the amount of money or investment that is required for the various road networks the expansion that are needed um one cd one cd 50 pesos and even you consider a track paying like three cities for me it's inadequate the big trucks could be charged let's say 10 cities because these these heavy trucks they cause so much damage to the road one truck loaded i mean how much is even a cement today to patch the road so we need to pay the realistic amount and again after we have paid it we don't want to see the the the, the current situation of the mamoto way it's so bad you cannot you need to be so careful otherwise you're going to kill yourself the traffic is so much we pay the realistic amount government should use the money to fix the road you heard tax expert there francis timor boy away from that three businesses learning that government has made coupon and principal payments on bonds that matured on the 6th of february and the 13th of february our sources earlier revealed that payment processes had commenced for the said bonds which matured during the domestic debt exchange but were not honored holders of these bonds could be receiving their monies any moment from now as we are learning that the funds have been released However, three business um, told the bond, the bonds that matured on February 20 have not been paid. It is not clear why the government has not made payments on the bonds. The government suspended a debt service during the exchange exercise and pledged to resume payment by March 13, following a meeting with all three bondholder groups that refused to participate in the debt restructuring. But as of the close of the day for Monday, the government had again not made payments, sparking anxiety with with regard to the affected bondholders. The individual bondholder groups jointly issued a two-day ultimatum to the government to honor its promise or risk seeking another round of protest. Of course, we're keeping an eye on this particular subject to bring you the details in our subsequent broadcast. Financial analyst with Deluxe Finance, Joe Jackson, is warning of dire consequences for Ghana's economy if government fails to secure an IMF program by middle of next month. His warning follows earlier remarks by Finance Minister Ken Ophiata that things could get out of hand if a bailout program is not reached by the end of April. Mr. Jackson said, based on the ongoing negotiations with external creditors and China's lukewarm attitude, the process could be much more potential. Attracted. The dark consequences will start with a shortage of foreign exchange. This is a country that imports all its energy requirements. Maybe uh, so fuel, we could run out of fuel. We could run out of electricity because I, I, uh, uh, less than uh, 30% of that is generated from Akosombo. We could run out of drugs, food, everything imported would be at risk. Remember that we haven't paid a dime in our uh, foreign exchange debts since December. We've defaulted. The reason why we have been treated with kid gloves so far is because there's reasonable belief that the IMF deal will happen soon enough and there will be stabilization in our affairs, our economic affairs. If we miss this deadline and we miss it too badly, that belief could disappear and we could start to face the doomsday scenario that His Excellency the President of Ghana has described. You heard the voice of Joe Jackson. He is with Deluxe Finance. That's how we wrap up the business news right here on Hot Edition on 3FM 92.7. Log on to 3news.com for more business news. My name is Della Michelle Morina. Would, would you go in for the 10 cities? <laughs> For the for the for the toll, I mean, um, the tax expert is, is advocating that the truck should pay ten cities. We also hear in uh, the truck for drivers will pass it on to the ordinary Ghanaian. Sometimes some of the things, I mean, the conversations would go on, but maybe two cities, two, two cities. cities at best is what will serve. 
that's why I keep saying the conversation because somebody will say that if you've bought a car, then you can afford two CDs or you can afford five CDs. So, yeah. Well, let's see how the conversation goes. But of course, we will monitoring that particular development. All right, then. Dela Michelle with the very latest from the world of business, sports, and entertainment will come up shortly. But a lot more stories for you if you stay with us here on 3FM 92.7 and Hot Edition. We're back shortly after this. Keys. What could be simpler than a key? Who doesn't have a key? A car key, an office key, a draw key. But there's one key that rules them all. The house key. The key to a place we call home. The key to the home where everything comes together. The key to a home that is our own. A home where we make life happen with our families and loved ones. Adoha has been working hard for over 30 years to make home ownership within reach for many. Say yes to property with Adoha. Your dream home is one call away. Your dream home is a few clicks away. Visit our Accra project, The Place, by calling 030-27-89757. Right then, many thanks for staying here on 3FM 92.7. Our top stories in the last few minutes. Individual bondholder groups issue 48-hour ultimatum to Ministry of Finance to honor its word to pay all matured principal and outstanding coupons due on existing bonds issued by government. We'd also, we've also been telling you about uh, the majority in Parliament wanting root tolls pegged at five cities and above as they vow to reject anything less in business. A tax expert has been uh, Again, that at 10 cities, let us know what you think. But Ms. AK, a coffer is in studio to provide the very latest from the world of entertainment. That's right. Now, coming up on Entertainment Tonight, Dawn Morn Moses Bliss headlined the 25th edition of Harvest Praise. Also, the artist shortlisted for this year's VGMA on sound category will be announced on March 15. Well, as Mawena said, my name is Akofa. Let's settle for the details. So for 24 years, Easter Gospel Show Harvest Praise has drawn Christians and non-Christians together to praise and worship. Now, the 25th edition of the annual Harvest Praise headlines, renowned international gospel singer Dawn Morn, Moses Bliss, and the Harvest Gospel Choir on Good Friday, April 7. Now, here's a story put together by my colleague, Noella. And God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Running for 24 years, the Easter Gospel Show, Harvest Praise, is here again. Aside bringing together prolific gospel musicians and Christian folks under one praises and worship umbrella, the show targets evangelism as part of its core mandate. Hearts are filled with a lot of gratitude to God because we sometimes ask ourselves how we made it for 25 years and we can only give the praise to God. It's been one year after the other, one challenge after the other, one mountain after the other for us to be able to scale. And um, it has been a testimony of God's faithfulness. I know that uh, he will continue to uh, make this outreach what it was birthed to be. For the 25th edition, Harvest Praise is featuring a renowned international gospel singer, Don Moen, Moses Bliss, and Harvest Gospel Choir on Good Friday, April 7th at the University of Professional Studies Accra UPSA Auditorium. Like all other years, you will not be disappointed. We have all the way from Nigeria, Moses Bliss of Bigger Everyday Fame. And all the way from the United States of America, we have Minister Don Moen. In a bid to push the Ghanaian gospel music onto the global stage, Harvest Praise, organized by Harvest International Ministries, is to unveil a new record label as part of its legacies for the 25th anniversary. Reverend Fitzgerald Odonko is the president of Harvest International Ministries. You know, that's really the great legacy that we want to bequeath to the Christian gospel scene, uh, not only in Ghana, probably in Africa. And um, 
that is the next level that God is leading us on to, that we will provide, as it were, a crucible for gospel artists to find refuge and to find an instrument or uh, uh, a means by which their music will reach the world and they wouldn't be laden with the burden of marketing and uh, promises broken. Well, if you don't have plans for Good Friday, April 7, uh, you might want to find your place at uh, this year's Harvest Praise. Now, moving on, uh, it is almost that time of the year where we get to unveil some relatively unknown but super talented artists who will compete for the unsung artist title at the 24th Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. Now, for uh, 10 solid years, the VGMA has made a commitment to shine light on some budding acts and birth top music stars like Ms. V, Kwame Eugene, um, Kelvin Boy, Mr. Drew, Enu Baroni, Jackie, and many more. Now make a date with us on Wednesday, 15th of March, 2023 at 12 noon. As you know, we get to find out the list of artists who've been shortlisted for the 10th anniversary of the VGMA Unsung category. Now this announcement will be live on selected media general platform. So you might want to stick with us on that one so we can, uh, you know, update you on that one. That's it for entertainment on Hot Edition. My name is over to you. And some category, what yeah. are you featuring on that? Um, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. You know, I've yeah. been pushing. Uh, you have that. been, but yeah, I'll think you about need it. To. I <laughs> you need to. You need to. We'll I'm see how it goes. Spot. I know. So, I, know. I mean, once the next single coming up, and uh, maybe an album or something. I need to consult my pillow. <laughs> A pillow? Yeah, yeah, my pillow, yeah. Right then, that's a couple <laughs> for the very latest from the world of business. A real quiz on standby. He's bringing us sports as well because Champions League is back, but there's some news about a joint World Cup bid. Yeah. Uh, had me a bit muzzled. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so we're just showing on TV3, that's the... Uh, Inaugural made an edition of the 2022 CAF Excellence Awards, which right. saw a uh, Rwanda president Paul Kagame and then uh, King of Morocco, as uh, King Mohammed the Sith, pick up uh, special awards from. Uh, Patrick Motepe representing CAF uh, for their work in sports uh, in the year 2022. And uh, there was a revelation made at the conference which took place in Kigali. Now, His Excellency Shakib Ben Musa, who is the Minister for National Education, Preschool and Sports in Morocco, confirmed at the awards uh, that took place in Kigali that the North African country have officially applied to co-host the 2030 World Cup alongside Portugal and Spain. That is because the ambition I hold for my country is inseparable from that which I nurture for the African continent. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, with that in mind, I would like to announce before this assembly that the Kingdom of Morocco has decided together with Spain and Portugal to present a joint bid to host the 2030 World Cup. This joint bid, which is unprecedented in football history, will bring together Africa and Europe, the Northern and Southern Mediterranean, and the African, Arab, and Euro-Mediterranean worlds. It will also bring out the best out of the best in all of us, in effect, a combination of genius, creativity, experience, and means. I thank you, and peace be upon you. And so the big news is that Morocco replaced Ukraine and would have a joint bid for the 2030 World Cup alongside Spain and Portugal. This doesn't mean that they've won. This is just an application process and it would go to, to uh, the due diligence where uh, FIFA delegates would decide on whose bid is the best uh, mm. to uh, host the 2030 World Cup. Uh, but let's do some more here where the Handball Association of Ghana is holding its first ever training workshop for handball referees in Ghana aimed at improving the state of officiating in the region. Diabate Mamuzu, who's the president of the Plain and Rules Commission uh, of the African Handball Confederation says Ghana has the potential to provide some of the best referees. You need first your effort and after we'll try to help. And also the second thing I have here, many young referees, many, 
And uh, really in the future, I think Ghana will have some talented and good referee. We'll be bringing you a full report on what happened at the workshop much later on News 360 on TV3 at 7.45. But before we go, just an update on the UEFA Champions League where Manchester City welcome RB Leipzig and the second leg of the round of 16 tie. A uh, game is evenly poised after ending 1-1 in Germany. Pep Guardiola expects his side to progress into the quarterfinals because he knows that his team would be judged based on their success only in Europe. Have a true public opinion. That doesn't mean that we change the I agree with that, but absolutely. Absolutely, we'll be judged for that competition. Yeah, definitely. Because since the day one arrived here in the first game in Champions League, they asked me when just arrived, landed here, sitting for the first time, you are here to win the Champions League. I said, What? So I was manager for Real Madrid that this is not going to happen, but I could understand, but here, I don't know, but I accept it. So as much you go through, it's not going to change that. Yeah, definitely. So pressure definitely on Pep Guardiola. Yeah, there will always be pressure. <laughs> he came to, he's there to win the Champions League. Yeah, he has, to, he has to do that. I mean, I'm sure they're tired of winning the Premier League at this point, four out of five. Although they would love to win, I think that they would also want to taste I, the Champions League. Yeah, yeah, they would love to win the Premier League again. Yeah. For a player like Haaland, he's won <laughs> Yeah, he's not won it. So yeah. he, he would love to yeah. win it. But many thanks, Oriku, for bringing us the very latest from the world of sport. We'll just end with uh, that story. President... At the Honors, uh, National Honors and Awards, and he's made the argument that the persons who are being celebrated uh, during today's event were not selected based on political motivation. The event was marked to celebrate the contributions of health workers and the legal team which delivered the maritime border dispute against Ivory Coast and as well some founding are individuals who've led very astute lives. Here is a president speaking at the event. It is important to state in conclusion that today's award ceremony is a purely national event, devoid of partisan, ethnic, or religious considerations, and organized solely in recognition of the services offered by its recipients to the growth development, progress, and prosperity of Ghana. I, as the President of the Republic, the Fount of Honor, act as the head of state and not as head of government in the distribution of awards. I can happily say that I am not aware of the political sympathies or views of the overwhelming majority of today's awardees. Their politics is of no moment to me, only their exploits in favor of Mother Ghana. President Akufuado there, ending this evening's edition of the Bulletin. But like I've been telling you, you can send messages to our Facebook handle, 3FM 927, where the Bulletin has been streaming all throughout this evening. And just by way of commentary, this one that came through from Aaron Babako Kokomisa, he says that the award symbolizes our significance, hard work, success, and our excellence within the working environment to encourage the person receive the award to do and also to trigger the spirit of hard work and dedication among the spectators to also aspire to achieve excellence in their area. The point is that the price of food items is high. Most citizens struggle to feed themselves three times a day, which means that we need jobs in the system. Pretty interesting way to uh, uh, script or write that message. But that's it from us here at 3FM. A lot more news when you log on to uh, 3news.com. A pleasure that you could be a part of the bulletin.